difficulties and problems leave many of us trying to find time and a place to worship the living God. Life's hurts and pains have left many of us spiritually starving for a transfiguring experience in our lives. Satan has thrown us some heavy hits, which have left us alone, betrayed, hurt, rejected, depressed, and straight out yes. straight. But I came today to bring good news to you, saints. God told me to tell you that he is transforming his glory yes. in your life, even as I, I speak this that. introduction. I'm going to say that again. God told me yes, to tell Lord. you that he is transforming yes, his Lord. glory in your I life, that, even as I speak this introduction. Yes. Amen. Yes. A touch that. of glory is all you need. Look at somebody today and say, a touch of glory is all you need. A touch, a touch of glory, glory is all you need. need. A touch of glory. God has set you apart and called you his elect. And no matter what the devil is trying to do, God's will will come to pass in yes, your life. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And this leads us to the text. Amen. Uh -oh. Verse 6 and verse 1 of chapter 17. You better execute it. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. Look at your neighbor and say, after six days. After six, six days. days. Say it again, after six days. After six days. After six silent days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up a secluded mountain. The Bible says he led them. And sometimes in our lives, we too have to allow Jesus to lead us to a secluded place. Amen. We have to allow Jesus to lead us up a secluded mountain, somewhere he can speak to us. You yes. see, just six days prior, I want to show you something in this text that's real important. Just six days prior, Jesus was ministering about something real important. Go to uh, go to Luke 16, 21. Look right above it. It says, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, uh -huh. and that he must be killed on the third day to be raised alive. So uh -huh. just six days prior, Jesus was... Yeah, he hid his disciples with the news of what would happen to their teacher about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So six days before, and then you have from that time to this time that this is about to take place, you have six silent days of nothing. Jeez. You have six silent days of nothing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, something awesome is about to happen. And the disciples are about to witness something amazing. And many of you have received some hard hits. And you're in a silent place in your life right now with God. Wow. You're in a silent place. You're wondering, where is God? Yeah. You're wondering, what's going on? You're wondering, uh. what, what, what's going on with me? You know, I, I'm not hearing from God like I used to. Oh, I don't, I, 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 I can't, I can't. It's just silent. It's just silent. Look at somebody today and say it's silent. It's, it's silent. silent. Come on, baby. Just like yes. the disciples, you have been hit hard Jeez. by life and Jeez. suffering. And you are wondering, where is God? Uh, but just yes. like the disciples, Jesus is leading you up a secluded mountain Woo! where he can do something real special with you. You see, that's the thing. Jesus has to lead us up a mountain. We have to go somewhere in God. I'm telling you something, something real. that We have to be led up a mountain because we have to be in a place that where God can speak to us. And when there's a lot of people around, God can't speak to us. He wants us to be in a place where he can... He can, we can hear his voice. The text says they were by themselves. And where you are going, no one else can go but you. I'm going to say that again. Where you're going, no one else can go but you. Where you are going, no one else can go but you. I said where you are going, yes. no one else can go yes. but you. Where you are going, no one else can go but you. Yes. God told me to tell you that his glory is just for you. To witness, baby, and no one else can come. Nobody else can come. It's just for you. His glory is just for you. I'm going to keep saying it until it just drops in here. Thank His glory is just for you. you. It's a personal yeah. thing. Look at somebody today yes, and say it's a Jesus. personal thing. It's a personal thing. His glory is just for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. leading you up that mountain right now so he can just drop that glory on you right Thank now. You. In Jesus' Thank name. You. In I Jesus' you. name. I in Jesus' name. That. The question is. Will you trust them and go? Mm. Like the disciples. Well, That's the question. That's the theological question. He wants to do this thing in your life. He's, 
It's silent in your life. All hell's breaking loose around you, but it's silent in your life. He's trying to lead you up a mountain. He's leading his disciples up a mountain, and they follow him. And his question to you is, will you follow him? So verse 2, let's look at verse 2. After being led up the holy mountain, Jesus transfigures in front of them. Look what it says here. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Transfigured. Transfigured. Yes. Think about it. Transfigured. Transfigured. Say, let's look at your neighbor and say transfigured. Transfigured. Say transfigured again. Transfigured. I'm going to teach this thing and y'all going to get this thing. The Bible says his face shone like that of the sun and his clothes became as white as light. The face is the prominent part of the body. When you meet a person, what do you see first? The face. The face. The face. So the first part we see is the face that we focus on. So the Bible clearly states that Jesus' face shone as bright as the sun. And Jesus began to glow brightly. His body, catch this, was glowing so brightly that it radiated through his clothes. Mm. It wasn't the clothes that was glowing. The clothes were still in the natural. But the Jesus was in the unnatural. The Jesus was in the supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. The Jesus was in the supernatural. I said Jesus was in the supernatural. Oh, no. See, the clothes were still in the natural. Hey. But Jesus was in the supernatural. in the supernatural. He was glowing as bright as the sun. It compared it to the sun. They, they could hardly look upon Jesus. Transfigured in the Greek is the word metamorpho. And it means to transform or abruptly change one's appearance. And as Jesus gets a hold of your life, this is what he wants to do to you. He wants to abruptly change your appearance. He don't want to leave you the way you are not a second longer. He wants to abruptly change your attitude. He wants to abruptly change your life. He wants to abruptly change your family. He wants to abruptly change your circumstances. He wants to abruptly change your marriage. He wants to abruptly deliver you. He wants to abruptly do some awesome things in your life. He wants to abruptly, 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 abruptly deliver you. He wants to abruptly move you on to some greater and glorious things. Amen? Amen. Yes. And as Jesus gets a hold of your life, this is what he wants to do. The same glory that is on Christ, God desires to allow to shine on you. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes, sir. The same glory that is on Christ, God desires to place that same glory on you. Amen. I received that. You My see, God, this that transfiguring was just confirmation of something. Mm. The transfiguration of Jesus was confirmation of what had happened six days prior. The conversation that Jeez. took place six days prior, this is teaching. The conversation that took place six days prior between him and his disciples about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. It needed a confirmation. Mm -hmm. The confirmation was going on during the transfiguration. Amen. Amen. And God is about to come along and confirm some things in your life that have been transfigured. My God. My God. There's some things in your life that have been transfigured that are changing right before your eyes. And thank you, Holy Ghost. God told me to tell you, you don't even know they've been transfigured. Mm. You don't even know they've been transfigured. But God said he's already come along and he's about to confirm some things and make you glow publicly in front of your foes. Oh, my God. God said he's going to make you glow publicly. And then the text tells us that two people show up. Who shows up? Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. Good. Oh Moses and Elijah Come show on, up. Good job. So we got Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Follow me, Bishop. Follow me with the camera, Bishop. Okay. You got Jesus, Moses, and Elijah up in the sky. Jesus is glowing. You ever seen a glow worm? You ever had a glow worm when you were a kid? No. It makes me think about the glow worm. <laughs> There was a toy called a glow worm. Okay. Jesus was glowing. But it makes me think about that because it shined through the clothes. I could just picture what Jesus looked like shining through his clothes. And then down here on the ground, you have the disciples. You have Peter, James, and John. 
So you have three and three. You have three witnesses in heaven, and you have three witnesses on earth. Mm. And here's the transfigured Jesus, and we're confirming what he just said about his death, burial, and resurrection. And then you have another thing going on, too. You have Moses, Elijah. I'm going to go slow because I want you to get it. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. You have Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. And the thing about it is you have something very important because Moses represented the law. Elijah represented the prophets. Mm -hmm. So you had the law, the prophets, and then the fulfillment of it all right there having a conversation. Mm -hmm. So you had all three right there together. You had you the law, the prophets, and the fulfillment. You had the entire word of God in the sky represented right there. Amen. 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 That's good, wasn't good it? Teaching. Yeah. That's some teaching right there. Amen. That's some people might catch that next year. Amen. <laughs> they might catch that in a century or so. Amen. Once they, <laughs> once they get delivered. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So the text tells us that Moses and Elijah show up to witness this glorious transfiguring of the Christ with their earthly counterparts, the disciples. Heaven and earth witness this miracle of the glowing Jesus as well as the prophets and the law. Moses represented the law and Elijah represented the prophets, but the only one who was glowing was who? Jesus. Jesus, because he's the only one who could. Ooh. He's the only one who's glorified. Wow. He's the only one who's magnified. Yes. He's the only one who's all that. He's the only one who's all that in a bag of chips. Amen? Amen. He was the only one glowing in the sky. Now, I don't understand how the disciples just stood there and watched. Come on now. But, 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 but something else gracious. starts to happen. Breeze, Pastor. Something else starts to happen. Something else starts to happen. So as you have them in the sky talking about the fulfillment of each other, because that's what they were doing. They were talking about fulfilling each other, confirming what was just said about Jesus always told them that the prophets and the law spoke about him. That's scripture. That's what the word said. So the three were having a conversation about the fulfillment of each other and was about to take place through the glowing transfigured Jesus. So, and in the same way, there are some things that are about to be fulfilled in each of your lives. The scriptures, they don't lie. God don't lie either. You are the head and not the tail. And I speak in the name of Jesus fulfillment in your life. Yes. I speak in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I speak in the name of Jesus fulfillment in your life. I speak in the name of Jesus fulfillment in your life. There's some things that you've been believing in God for. Yes. There's some things that you've been waiting for. And I Ooh. speak in the I name of Jesus. That. I receive that. There's some that, things Pastor. that are going to be fulfilled yes, in your yes, life. There's yes, been some things man. prophesied yes, over Lord. your life. Man, There's Lord. been some things Lord. said Lord. over your Lord. life. Lord. There's Lord. been Lord. some things spoken. Oh, you know what's up? Goodness, I received that. Verse 4. Let's look at verse 4. Let's, I got to move on. God just won't let me. He just wants y'all to know and believe that uh. what he has said, that he shall not lie. God wants me to tell you under the yes. anointing that what he has said, you, that what you believe him for, Hallelujah. keep on believing him for, you, that yes, what you said, that you got to believe him. Yes, you you got to believe God. Thank you got to believe God. The devil, God said, the devil has thrown things at you to make you doubt. That there's been a spirit of doubt in your home. And God said, you better kick it out. You better kick it out. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord have mercy. Peter. 
Peter, Peter, Peter. Mm. Oh, Peter, 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 Peter. That Peter. Mm. And everybody loves that zillious Peter. Mm. That zillious Peter. Peter know it all. Amen? Yeah. Peter Jesus. Potty Mouth. That's what I used to call him. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Peter Potty Mouth. Peter Lord was mercy. cussing like a sailor Peter before Peter got delivered. Amen? Amen. But Peter also preached the first sermon at Pentecost on Pentecost Sunday, which today's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Amen. So we're going to celebrate Peter. Amen. We're going to talk about Peter a little bit. Verse 4 explains how Peter gets excited and desires to build what? Three, Three tabernacles, tabernacles or shelters for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And what God showed me in this is that as usual, when God's up to something supernatural, us people step in to the natural and try to make plans and do things apart from God. Oh, have mercy. So Peter, Peter meant well, but God didn't need no help in this situation. Oh, and God mercy. told me to tell you he don't need no help in yours. My God. God told me to tell you he don't need no help in your situation. Yes. All you got to do is pray. Yes. All you got to do is worship. Yes. All you got to do is pray. All that. you got to do is magnify him. That. And God yes. said he will transfigure you. God said he will magnify you. He yes. will lift you up. The Bible says if you humble yourself yes. under the mighty hand of God, that he will. He shall exalt you in due season. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And in this situation, God didn't need any help. And all he needs is one thing, for us to do one thing, and that's to be led by Jesus. Mm -hmm. To be led, and all you do, be led by Jesus. Jesus. And to be a what? There's two things going on right now. You got the disciples being led, and the disciples being a witness. Be led, and be a witness. Woo! Be led, and be a witness. My Look God. at somebody and say, be led, be led and be a witness. And be a witness. Verse 5. While he was still speaking, Peter, Peter still in the middle of running his mouth, still running his mouth. Jesus, you know, I, I think we ought to uh, build these three tabernacles. Let me do this for you. And then all of a sudden, a bright cloud shows up and surrounds them all. And for a second time in scripture, not the one time, this is the second time God interrupts uh, something and says the first time, let me see. Before the first time this happens is in the baptism of Jesus. But this is the second time. God shows up and says, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. Lord have mercy. The first time God says this is in Jesus' baptism. And here he is interrupting Peter's plans with this awesome statement. And God will do that. That's what God will do. Peter was interrupted by God, and God will interrupt our plans when they don't align with his. Let me say that again. God will interrupt our plans when they don't align with his. God will interrupt our plans when they don't align with his. If we're on our way to do something that is not God's will, God will show up with his will and prop it in our face. Amen? God will show up with his will and prop it in our face. God will show up with his will and smack us upside the head with it. Amen? Anybody in here want to be smacked upside the head? with God's will. Yes. <laughs> Anybody in here want God's will? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he got to do to bring it, bring it, daddy. Look at some ideas today and say, bring it, daddy. Bring it, daddy. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Many of you are wondering why this or that hasn't worked out. And God has interrupted your plans. You've had some plans that have been interrupted. Mm -hmm. And many of you are wondering, why is this not working? Why is this or that not working? Why I didn't get that job? Why I didn't get this job? Why did this have to happen to me, God? Why did that person have to hurt me, God? Well, and God just wanted me to tell you today that he had to interrupt some plans. My God. That there's just some things that were not for you. Mm -hmm. There were some people that were not for you. There were some things in you that were not for you. Mm -hmm. There were some things in you that had to come out. Oh, and God said he had to stop you dead in your tracks. 
and interrupt your plans right where you were at because you were headed down a wrong road. You were headed down a road of destruction, says the Lord. You were being deceived by the devil. The devil appears to us as an angel of what? Light. 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 He don't come to us as darkness. He comes to us as light, and he deceives us. And the Lord wants me to tell you today, you were being deceived. You were being deceived, so he had to interrupt your plans with something better and tell you to listen to him. Ooh. Amen, amen, yes. amen. According to Jeremiah 29, 11, his plans are much, much better. Amen? Amen. 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 God gives a command here. Let's look at this scripture. Let's look at what God says. Well, have mercy. It says, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud and said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. What was the command that God gave? Listen to him. Listen to him. Come Thank on, you. Mercy. Thank you. Come Thank on, you. Man. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Oh, have mercy. Amen. Listen to him. Listen to him. Oh, have mercy. God shows up and says, listen to him, Peter. Uh -huh. Shut up, Peter, and listen to him. Listen, Jesus. I wonder what they were talking about. I know they were talking about the death, burial, and the resurrection. <laughs> I know that's what they were talking about. Amen. Listen to him. And we got to get to a place in God where we learn to listen to him. We got to get to a place in God where we learn to lay down our thoughts and pick up God's thoughts. And we have all of God's thoughts. They're listed between Genesis and Revelations. Yeah. So if you know the Bible, if you know the Word, you can replace your stinking thinking with Ooh. God's awesome thinking. Amen? Right. Because we got some stinking thinking going on. Amen? We think doubt. We think fear. And God's thinking, I've spoken good things over you. God said some good, really good things over us. Amen? Yes. Amen, amen, and amen. Yes. Amen. You're doing a great job. And I'll be closing shortly. I'm coming to a close. So the brightness of this cloud was so, so, so startling that the disciples, they fell face down to the ground terrified. They were terrified. Now, I don't get this. This is something I don't get. How did the brightness of Jesus, it didn't startle them. But when they hear God's voice, all of a sudden, they were startled so, so, so much, they dropped down to the ground. How in the world does that happen? <laughs> Come on now, you see the glowing Jesus, your glowing Savior. But you hear a voice, a still, small voice, a little voice. That just shows you the awesomeness of God. The awesomeness of what he can do in your life. The awesomeness of how he created you. Just one word, just a few words made them fall face down. Uh, terrified. The Bible don't say they just fell down and worship. The Bible says they fell down and were terrified. Wow. They were they were absolutely scared out of their bejeebies. They were scared wow. to death of this voice. They were they were they were in complete awe of what was going on right yes. here. And I, I, and they were scared, but look what Jesus does. Can you read verse 7 for me? And Jesus came and touched them. Read it, brother man. And Matt. said, Arise, Ooh. and be not afraid. Be not afraid. Read it again. And Jesus came mm. and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. Uh. Yes, amen. But Jesus came and touched them. He said, get up, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. And, and, and so, so Jesus does two things here. Jesus comes, and the first thing he does is, is what? Says what? Says get up. In my version. It depends on which version you have, because they're listed backwards in different versions. Jesus comes and touches them and says, get up and don't be afraid. After God gives a direct command for us to listen to his son, the very first command we are given by Jesus to do is, number one, get up, get up. and don't, don't be, afraid. be afraid. Amen? Amen. So as they up. fall to the ground, scared to death, scared, scared that, 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 that life and death is, that they don't know what's going to happen, Jesus comes and he's not glowing anymore. And he touches his brothers. 
and he touches them and he says, get up and don't be afraid. And we need to learn how to get up and don't be afraid. The Bible says that for a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. For if a righteous man falls seven times, seven times, one time's bad enough, two times a plenty, three times more, but falls seven times a righteous man, he gets up. Amen. Amen. We got to learn to get up and don't be afraid. Yes. We got to, y'all, we got, thank you, Holy Ghost. We got so many problems. God knows we got problems. God knows that we have got a lot of things going on in our lives. Let me just talk and teach for a minute. We've got a lot of things that we're dealing with. We've got a lot of things going on. But the Holy Spirit wants us to learn to get up and not be afraid. Amen. Amen. We've got people that have hurt us. We've got people that walked out of this ministry. We've got people that put their mouth on this ministry. We've got people that put their mouth on my husband. We've got people that put their mouth on you. There's people that put their mouth on me. There's people that, as I'm preaching, are probably talking about each and every one of us because that's what people love to do. But we have to learn to get up and not be afraid. Arise. I like what your version said. Yeah. It said arise. He's got that King James, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Arise. It said arise. we got to learn to arise. we got to learn to arise out of our problems. we got to learn when we're terrified how to get up. And not be afraid. Mm. Amen. Amen. We got to learn that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus, he transfigured on that mountain. And then he went to the cross. He was crucified. He was buried behind a tomb. And then he rose on the third day. Amen. And because of what he did, we don't have to be afraid. The Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power and of love and a sound mind. We don't have to walk in fear. We don't have to be afraid of the supernatural. We've got to step out of the natural. See, that's the problem with the saints now in the church. Let, let me go. I thank you, Holy Ghost. This is the problem with the church right now. They want to do what's supernatural in the natural. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Good God. They want to do what's supernatural in the natural. Mm -hmm. You can't do what's supernatural in the natural. I don't know how to. That's a word, man. You've got churches that don't even believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. What kind of church are we without the Holy Ghost? That's right. What is Pentecost without the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. I thank God yes. for the Holy Ghost. Yes. You can't pray hard. You can't pray long in the natural. That's right. Mm -hmm. You need to do it in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will pray through you. Will pray through you with utterances that cannot be even heard by man. Mm -hmm. We got to learn to do, to arise out of some stuff. Mm -hmm. We think we know it all. There's a spirit yeah. of pride in the church. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. There's a spirit of pride in the church. I'm just prophesying to the church. God is not pleased. There's a spirit of pride in the church. And you've even got people pretending to be supernatural when they're at fact in their flesh. You've got people even speaking in tongues in their flesh. You've got people running around the church in their flesh. You've got people shouting in their flesh. Wow. Just because you run around the church and shout a little bit does not mean that you're in the spirit. Ooh. In the spirit, Jesus, right. let me tell you something. Jesus, Jesus she is bad. a gentleman. She she Jesus is a gentleman. Bad. I'm not bad. God's bad. Amen. Jesus is a gentleman. <laughs> All right. He's a gentleman. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's gentle. He's gentle. And just because you have an experience with God, he don't make you anointed and he don't make you anything. You should reverence your time with God. Amen. Mm. That's right. Let me share something. When I was writing this sermon, after I got done, the Lord began to deal with me. And my worship has been interfered with for a long time. That's the word. There's been interference in my worship. And I'm a worshiper. I love to worship. To take away my worship, my worship replaced my addiction. Mm. I'm going to go and say that. My worship, leave it on, Bishop. 
My worship replaced my addiction. And to take away my worship would be to take away something that means the world to me. That's how I get my fix. Mm -hmm. It's through my worship. Oh, Amen. And, and, and it was interfered with. And life will interfere with your worship. I'm telling you, problems in life, medical situations, the things we go through will interfere with your worship. But the Lord took me back so deep into worship. I didn't even want to uncover my head because the house was full of the glory of God. And when God is in the house, you will know it. Because when God is in the house, you can feel the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 And sometimes, sometimes God will withdraw his spirit just to see, do you still know he's God? Mm -hmm. And do you still know he's there? See, God's not blessing every church right now with that kind of Shekinah glory. That's right. He's oh, not doing oh, it. Right. He's not doing right. it. Because the heart of the church isn't right. Give old Sakande and old Sakande. The heart of the church isn't right right now. God is not pleased with the church right now. He wants the church to return back to their first love. Jesus. He wants the church to return back to their first love. He wants the church to return back to their first love. And I, I pray people watch this through the whole thing because they need to hear this. God is not pleased with the fakeness in the ministry. God is not pleased with the, like he turned over the tables of the pigeon sellers. He's running through churches with his spirit, turning over money changers, turning over fake prophets. I'm telling you, he's pulling down some things. Yeah. Amen. He's transfiguring the church. Oh. Wow. He's transfiguring the church. There's some things, thank you, Holy Spirit, that have been prophesied over the church. Mm -hmm. There's some things in here that God has said shall come to pass. And he is confirming it by transfiguring his church. Mm -hmm. God bringing oh, it to the church. Jesus. He is transfiguring the people in his church. He is a remnant. There is a remnant of people who really love God. And he's pulling their hearts together into one beat Amen. so that he can return for a church without spot or blemish. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. 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 So we got to learn to arise from a lot of love problems. we got to learn to get up and get out of ourselves because we can't keep on going in the natural. we got to step into the supernatural with God because we, we do too much in the natural. We really do. We, we look through the natural. We, the, the Bible says we walk by what? Faith. Faith. And not by what? Sight. What more do I need to say? Mm -hmm. What more do I need to say? Uh. What more do I need to say? He's worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's worthy. His voice terrified the disciples. His voice, one little, one little sentence. We need to learn to be sensitive to his voice. Let me tell you, I was studying this week about Elijah. And after Elijah had his conquest on Mount Carmel, he runs supernaturally 40 days and 40 nights after 